it carefully. I'm not as crazy as you think. <laughs> so I'm a fool, am I? Now, you're the fool for coming here. You're the fool. The police will find you in this room with Wilson's dead body. They'll find you. I see that they do. And here's the gun you killed him with. <laughs> How's it going? My name is Sarah Allen Reed, and I'm a cartoonist, illustrator, musician, disc jockey, and a few other things that nobody cares about at this time. Welcome to the first of what I hope will be a long series of videos on how to draw shit. Or, more accurately, how I end up drawing shit, and how I fuck up a lot along the way. Now, I've been working for Fable Glade Records for a good amount of time now mainly designing small things, bookmarks, a couple tapes, the Hedgewind character they use as a little mascot. But what most people probably know me for over there in the Fable Glade world is our trading card series, where Hedgewind and the rest of the little funny animal crew have all kinds of seasonal adventures. We release about four sets every year, and every year I make four cards, one for each season to go with the tapes. Each of them are roughly the size of your average baseball card, but what most people probably don't think of when they see them is how they're made. So today, we're gonna make one together. Now, I draw these at about half the size most of my other illustrations are at. Usually I work at 11 by 17, but for these little cards and a few other illustrations, like these pieces right over here... Oh, hello. Hello, friend. Hello. Like these pieces right over here, I work at about 9 by 12. I use pen and ink for the initial line work right here in my studio and do the coloring digitally later on the other side of my studio where the computer is. This is my little work area here, so let's pour ourselves some coffee and get started, shall we? Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rule out the edges of the card. This is going to give me a nice little border to work with here, as well as keep the image from bleeding clear off the page. I'm not doing anything too precise, just enough to give me a general working area. Anything that bleeds over in the end, I'll crop out in post. Now, normally, I start Hedgewin and his little friends with a bean. They're kind of meant to be friend-shaped, and beans are a fun friend shape. Friendly little beans. Anyways, once I have the bean in, I add in a rough idea of where the non-bean parts are going to go. Claws, paws, schnoz, and all that other things that separate beans from animals. And then I start sketching in the other details. I had the idea of making a kind of campfire scene here, with our heroic hedge boy roasting himself a marshy man's, with a friendly, smiling fire, kind of like the ones in Howl's Moving Castle for a little snack in the middle of the night. So I started this up with a rough pencil sketch of a tree for him to sit on, the rough outline of the campfire, and that little iconic lantern that our little friend is always shown with. 
Now, nearly all of the pencil work here is incredibly rough. I don't normally bother putting in too much effort on the penciling side of thing, preferring instead to work everything out in ink once the basics are settled in. A good portion of my pencil work is done with just a standard mechanical pencil, and a good portion of the rest of it is done with the carpenter's pencil you can see here. A bit of shading here, a bit of a hint of a structure there, and that's usually about where I could be arsed to leave it. Most of the shading that I'm doing with the carpenter's pencil that you see on screen is going to turn out black, so I'm blanketing this in large strokes with the carpenter's pencil, refilling my coffee cup, and shaking the ink bottle right on up so I can get to work on that section. Oftentimes, if I know I'm going to be adding a lot of white ink later on, I start with traditional brush and ink like I'm doing here. Traditional waterproof ink in a bottle makes the white ink go in on top of the black ink a lot cleaner than it otherwise would with, say, a felt tip or any of the other implements you're going to see me using later on. There will be a lot less bleed through. I use a pretty basic size 1 synthetic brush for this as well as Speedball Super Black Ink. Now, most of what I'm doing at this initial stage is pretty much the same thing I'm doing at the penciling stage. Blocking in areas, establishing structure, deciding about where I want things to be. The most important thing to remember here is even when you're working with a medium like ink, which is normally regarded as permanent to most people, nothing I lay down in this stage is going to be completely permanent. Drawing is a lot like life. You fuck up, you keep going. There's nothing that you can't fix, and nothing worth fussing over, and the only thing that ruins a drawing is giving up on it. Throughout this series, you're gonna see me fuck up a lot. I've been doing this for 21 years, I've been spending most of those 21 years fucking up. And I still fuck up. You just gotta keep pushing forward, and sooner or later, you'll learn how to fix it. And that's what grows you as an artist. Now here in a second, you're going to see me switch from this synthetic brush to a much, much larger, kind of larger, not really larger, uh, flat brush. And what I'm going to be doing with that, there's the flat brush, there's our friend, there's our buddy. What I'm going to be doing with this flat brush is blocking in a lot of the drawing. Again, the majority of this is going to be blacked out in shadow, and I'm going to be drawing on top of it, which is why I'm starting with the bottle of ink as opposed to going right into the felt tip. So a good portion of this part right here is just kind of spent blocking in. More black ink, layering it on, kind of scoping out where I'm going to put the white ink once we get to that point, doing a little bit of the shading, and just kind of getting it all situated for the next stage and making sure that I have the things I don't want to draw on with anything resembling finesse or detail blacked the fuck out. Now once we have all that black ink blocked on in, it's time for a quick cigar break as we do here in the studio. Gonna light that sucker? That's a good one. And then we're back at it. Now that I have all the black inks majorly blocked in, I take some time sketching a bit more in the figure itself in pencil and erasing some of the marks I don't particularly want to leave in, making sure the structure is as close to where I want it to be as I can get it before I start working with those felt tips. And then it's on to inking our little friend here. As I mentioned, I'm using a zebra felt tip brush pen for a good amount of this, which is the same exact tool that I use for lettering in a lot of my comics and sequential artwork. Now, if you're worried that you missed some of these names, by the way, don't you big worry about that. I've included a tiny little list of the things I use in this piece and in a lot of my work in general in the description of this video. Now, once our old friend Hedwin is all inked up and ready to roll, hitting his claws and the majority of the jacket outline and the rest of those kinds of things, I'm going to go ahead and start moving in on that campfire. Again, I'm going for that same kind of whimsical silliness that makes the fireplace in Howl's moving castle so charming. 
And so I want to make sure that the lines are light and fun to make the fire look like little sentient goofball that he is. Hedgewind's coat is next, both in terms of his fur and spikes, and in terms of a little cloak. Those little scribbles that I'm going to be making on the sleeves here in a couple seconds are going to be outlining where the larger black strokes are going to be in later once I black that area out. Again, I'm mainly taking the time to establish where I'm going to be doing things later. Although at this point in the process, I'm also doing a bit of the actual detail work. After that, we're going to head on over to the foliage. The tree is getting a good portion of the same treatment. A decent amount of the mark making I'm doing on it is the outline in my head where the larger black portions of ink are going to be put down later on. Aside from that, this is the basic bit of hatching for the bark, and then it's down to the grass itself. This is a pretty time is consuming affair, so I'd like to take a little bit of time while I do some of this hatching here. To remind you all that there's nothing in life worth giving up over. You'll occasionally hear me telling people who ask how long one of these takes, something to the effect of 29 years and 6 to 8 hours. I've been walking the earth for 29 years, and had I bothered giving up at any point in those 29 years, I wouldn't be here. The opportunities I've had in my career wouldn't have been here, and this drawing wouldn't be here, and you and I wouldn't be having this moment together today. No matter what you're going through, or how badly you think you fucked the proverbial pooch, the important thing is to keep on going, and do the best you can with what you've got in your life and on your page. Maybe you have to start again, toss the entire drawing or life out. Maybe you have to think about where you're at and what you're doing a bit differently, set it aside for a while. But the most important thing is to never, ever give up. Now that we've got our grass and our foliage down, it's time to switch to the big guns, my mainstay, the Pentel brush pen, to black in a bit more of the seam here. I'm going to get a basic outline bit for the foliage and the background and the trees and paint the sky a little tiny bit. But then after we do that, I think it's about time for an important message from today's video's sponsor. Yeah, I have advertisers. What are you going to do about it? Are you tired? Stressed out? Need a break from the day to day? Try Goofing Bath Cells and listening to this in black metal. Will it solve any of your problems? Dear God, no. But at the very least. Uh, uh, actually, I don't know of anything good that can come from this. Try not to do that. Ah, wasn't that a great message? I'd like to thank Bath Salts, uh, Boofing, and our special musical guest Dreadmall for that very important message that's really just so poignant to all of our lives. I think it's about time I'm in a quick cup of tea. I'm gonna let that steeper right up in there. Oh yeah. And then it's time to get back into it. I... One thing you're gonna learn real fucking quick is that I'm not very smart. I always seem to forget what the staff looks like for some reason, which is especially hilarious because I'm the asshole who fucking designed it. But then again, I also forgot that I had the cup of tea shown a few seconds ago in the video, steeping for about an hour and a half. So I guess that's not too abnormal for me. Anyways, now that I've penciled in a bit more of the structure here, having this reference of one of the older cards that I've just taped up on the drawing board... It's time to ink it. Now I'm using my zebra brush pen here again to get our little outlines ironed out. And then after we knock that in and get all these angles and protractors and other words that I don't know what they mean out of the way and onto the page, it's time to move on to a bit more of the foliage. Now... We're going to real quick zoom in here. Look at this futuristic technology. Oh, wait for it. Wait for it. It's going to be here. Oh, look at that shit. 
Motherfucker, I got a zoom lens. I'm unstoppable. Look at that. You can see how I make those little leaves work. Draw a leaf, shade it in. Draw another leaf, shade it in. It's real simple. And I could do more detail. I could be less simple. But this is cartooning. Cartooning is a lesson in abstraction. The idea isn't that every single leaf will be perfect. This is basically the foreground. It's supposed to be blurred out. We're focusing our attention on the little booth there and the little staff and his little fiery friend. We want to give the illusion of a bush of leaves. So we're going to go ahead and iron that out. And once we do that, it's time to move on to my best friend in the whole world. Come on. Come on. Best friend. I don't love you. At ah, There we are. The white gel ink pen. Look at that. Look at those sensual lines. I, I use this thing. I'm going to be real with you. I lose this thing far more than I should probably be allowed to. Especially in these little bushes. Again... The idea is to give the impression of leaves. So rather than drawing every leaf, we're going to draw the inverse. We're going to draw the outlines. We're going to hint. Every single little patch of black where the bushes are gets a little bit of these white leaves. Give it the illusion of fading just out of view. Now, I use the white gel pen for a lot more than that. I use white ink for a lot more than this. Right now, it's the leaves, but I'm also going to use it to give a small hint of a tree line in the back. A little bit of highlights on our friend's claws. There's a reason I use this as often as I do. But the most important reason is to give hints. To suggest. Rather than to just show. Because again, this is an exercise in abstraction. Now, once we're done with all that fading and weird sounding voiceovers involving a gel pen and my weird fascination with it, we're going to whip out our other old friend, the Pilot Pocket Brush Pen, for some heavy outlining and to lay in the blacks even more. Most of what we're going to be doing with this is making the lines a bit thicker where they need to be, emphasizing where we want the eye to go. We don't want it to go in the bushes. That's just meant to be a fade in and a fade out. No, we want it to go directly to Hedgewin. We want the eye to go directly to the lantern. We want the eye to go directly to the little fire buddy. And because of that, we're going to black out a lot of the area around Hedgewin and everything else. We're going to outline a little bit harder on the lantern, on Hedgewin, on everything else. We want the focus to be on our little friends. And that's what we're doing right now. We're going to black in a lot of these bushes and a lot of the foliage and get all this in. And then we're going to take a little bit of a break because my boo got home. I made dinner, spent some time with the boo and the dog, had a little bit of said dinner, drank some coffee, and then it's time to take the tape off. And we're going to go ahead and get to work on even more of the details. Once again, we're going to be using the zebra felt tip to shade in the sky, the leaves and the trees in the background, and all the other little background details that I can't do too terribly easily with the page taped down like it is when I'm doing the penciling. Remember kids, wrist stresses are really important to avoid as a professional creative. And you know, making your arm move all fucky in ways that it ain't supposed to just to get the right angle is a great way to stress your wrists. Don't do that. Just take the tape off. Rotate the page. It's a lot easier. We're picking up near the end of the piece here. So at this point, it's just a bit of hatching, 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 hatching on the tree, hatching on the stones, hatching on the coats, hatching on the fireplace, hatching on the grass, hatch, 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 hatch. Now, once all that hatching is done, I let the ink on the piece dry just a small tad bit while I have another cup of tea and... It's about time for the rest of my secret weapon. The dreaded, the awful, the terrible white pot of ink. Kuretaki number 30, for the record. I use a separate number 2 synthetic for this, and I tend to apply it pretty heavily 
and places I want to stand out. Places I want to outline and places where I fucked up and want to correct it. And from that, that's pretty much about it. After that, it's a tad bit of coloring in the old GNU image manipulation program across the studio on the other side of the room. And then we're sitting on a finished piece for the client. Thank you all so much for watching and spending a bit of time with me in the studio today. If you'd like to support the show in the future, watch episodes early, get an EP with the music from this episode all rolled from scratch by yours truly under the moniker X, and see even more of what I'm working on and as I'm working on it, please check out the Patreon link below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the content and want to see more, feel free to subscribe. And if you enjoy my work that you've seen here and you'd like to see more of it find out how to hire me to draw something for you or your squad or just drop me a follow and keep track of what I'm doing these days my website and social media links are in the description you're amazing and don't let anybody tell you that you're not y'all stay safe out there I'll see you next episode have a good one